Erev Shabbat Shalom Rabotai, we're continuing with our Mishnah Yomi Masechet Shabbat, we're up to Perek Chavbet Mishnah Hey, today's Mishnah should be Leilu Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana Aran Baev, Neliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen. The Mishnah discusses whether one who bathed on Shabbat and dried himself with a towel may then carry the towel. Ha'ochetz b'me me'ara of me'tveria, if one bathed in the water of a cave, meaning water heated, by man, which the commentaries explain, once water was heated, it was placed in an enclosed area such as a cave to prevent the heat from dissipating, or in the waters of Tveria, meaning any spring that is naturally hot, and the commentaries explain, the rabbis prohibited bathing one's body in hot water on Shabbat, even if the water was heated before Shabbat, because bathhouse workers would heat water on Shabbat and claim that they had heated it the day before. Later, the rabbis prohibited even bathing even in the water of the hot spring, which is naturally heated. However, when they saw that it was difficult for people to completely refrain from bathing in hot water on Shabbat, they permitted bathing in a hot spring, as the Gemara says in page 48 in Masechet Shabbat. The Mishnah refers to both bathing in water heated by a fire, which is forbidden, and bathing in a hot spring, which is permitted, as Tosfat explains. Now, since the Mishnah discusses even prohibited bathing, he uses the term arochetz, literally, one who bathes rather than rochatzin, we may bathe, as the Gemara explains, explains I'm sorry, on page 147a in Masechet Shabbat. So again, the Mishnah continues, if one bathed in the water of a cave or in the water of Tveria, and dried himself even with ten towels one after the other, he may not carry them home in his hand because he might squeeze water out of them. Now this is prohibited even though he used ten towels and the last ones are barely wet. Now the commentary say, squeezing water out of a towel is forbidden on Shabbat. It is permitted, however, to dry one's body with the towel even though the concern exists that one might squeeze it out. Now, had even drying oneself been prohibited, people would not wash on Shabbat as they would not want to wash without drying themselves. So the rabbis tried to avoid making a law that would prevent people from bathing on Shabbat altogether. However, ten people may dry their faces, hands, and feet with one towel. And the rabbi explains that the Mishnah, actually they may dry they may dry their entire body, and the reason the Mishnah mentions face, hands, and feet, because that is normally what communal towels were used for, and they may carry it in their hands, meaning when several people are together, they remind each other not to desecrate Shabbat, therefore even if 10 people used a single towel so that it's very wet, we are not concerned that the one who carries it will squeeze it, because the others will remind them not to do not to squeeze it. Now, in fact, the toast would explain, even if only two people are present, one of them is allowed to carry it home because the other will, will remind him not to squeeze it. And that is in Rabotev Mishnah. Hey, Mishnah Bab now cites other laws that pertain to the treatment of one's body on Shabbat. Sachin um shamishin bivne me'aim. We may anoint, meaning apply oil to and massage the stomach on Shabbat for pleasure, but the commentaries say not for healing purposes, and the commentaries explain one who suffers from a pain or ailment but is not so sick that he will stay in bed is rabbinically forbidden to take medicine or engage in other therapies like we spoke about earlier in chapter 14, Mishnah 3. Even one who anoints and massages his body for pleasure must do so in an unusual manner, as the Gemara says on page 147b, because otherwise they would be forbidden as weekday activities. Now just to point out, we read in the Mishnah, Sakhin um shamishin bivne me'aim, of the stomach. Now some versions of the text do not include stomach, so the Mishnah would therefore refer to all parts of the body. But we read it how the Mishnah is written, Avalo mit almin velo mit gardin. The Mishnah continues, however, we may not massage the body vigorously or scrape the skin even for pleasure because these are considered weekday activities. And the Rav explains what does it mean to scrape the skin. One may not use a, uh, a type of instrument used in ancient times to scrape sweat and dirt from the skin. En yodin le kudima. We may not go down to kudima. Now, the Rav's version of the text has a different version. He has... Pulmia, 
Now, the commentators explain this is a valley in which there are pools of water, and the reason you may not go down to it is because its ground is slippery, and one who goes to bathe there might fall, soak his clothes, and then squeeze them out, which is forbidden on Shabbat. Venosin apiktivizin, and we may not take an apik, uh, apiktivizin, which is a potion that induces vomiting, because this resembles healing, as Rashi explains. Now, the commentators explain the restriction is limited to drinking a liquid that induces vomiting. It is permitted to make oneself vomit by placing a finger in the back of one's mouth. And furthermore, one may even drink a apictivizine, which is this potion, if he has stomach pain, that would be eased by vomiting, as the Rav says. However, again, you always have to look at the commentaries, the elucidated notes bring down to look at Shulchan Aruch, chapter 328, Halakha 39. But again, we were just reading it, how the Mishnah is written, how the commentaries Say it. Then me'atzevin et katan, and we may not strain the bones or spinal vertebrae of an infant because doing so gives the appearance of building. And the Rav explains sometimes the bones or spinal vertebrae of an infant are a bit misaligned. One may not realign them on Shabbat because doing so resembles building. Now this restriction applies only after the day of birth. On the day of birth itself, one may violate any rabbinic prohibition for the sake of the infant, including realigning his vertebrae. Then, machzirin et shever, and we may not set a broken bone because it's an act of healing. Now, the halakha does not follow this mishnah. In fact, it's permitted to set a broken bone on Shabbat, as the Rab says, because the Ritma says if this is not done immediately, the entire limb could be endangered. Lo itrefem betsonen. I'm sorry, one whose hand or foot became dislocated, may not rub them vigorously with cold water because it's clear that he's doing so for purposes of healing. However, he may wash himself in his usual manner. And if he is healed, he's healed, meaning he may wash his entire body, including the dislocated joint, even though the joint might therefore be healed because since he is cleaning his entire body, he does not appear to be engaging in an act of healing as Emilia explains. Now the rabbinic prohibition against acts of healing on Shabbat we know apply only where it's clear that the act is intended to heal as the Mishnah said earlier in chapter 14 Mishnah 3 and 4 therefore here when you're doing it in the usual manner you don't appear to be engaging specifically in active healing so if that joint is healed it is healed. That is in Rabbi Taib 3's Mishnah everybody Shabbat Shalom Amen Amen